selected everyone as a non-default, uh, what accuracy would we get? Well, because the vast majority of people don't default, you would be right in thinking that everyone uh, doesn't default. You'd be wrong, but if you had to bet, you'd have to bet a person didn't default then it did. And we can see that 171 people uh, didn't default, and 18 people did default. All right, and uh, so with a null model, just assuming that everyone doesn't default, we get 90.5% uh, classification accuracy. Now, the variables in the equation actually offers a little bit of inf interesting information as well, uh, in that it's testing the hypothesis that uh, 18, the frequency of 18 and the frequency of 171, is actually statistically significantly different from each other. So if you were to expect that the sample size was uh, that no and yes were equal, that you had an equal probability of being a defaulter versus a non-defaulter, this um, Wald statistic is actually going to test that as a, as a hypothesis. And in this case, we're greatly, very substantially, rejecting the null hypothesis that there's an equal number of people within sampling variability uh, in the more defaulter versus non-defaulter. And this um, odds ratio, this is an exponentiated B, this unstandardized beta weight here, which is actually an intercept in this model. There are no predictors, so this is the intercept, uh, just like there's an intercept in multiple regression, and this is an exponentiated intercept, and how you get that value to gain a bit of insight about what it is, is that you divide 18 by 171. So it's telling us that there's it's actually 90% less chance. So 18 divided by 171 equals 0 0.105 and that's where that 0 0.105 comes from. So there's only, uh, if we subtract that, if, if we go 1 minus 0 0.105, which is usually how people try to interpret um, exponentiated B's or odds ratios, uh, you would get something like 90%. There's a 90% chance um, Le there's 90% greater likelihood of not being a mortgage defaulter. Uh, if you were to flip this, you can do this as your own little experiment. If you flip this, uh, if you flip the no's and yeses around, and so uh, a no would get a 1, and a yes would get a 0, and so now the model's trying to predict non-defaulters, you would get 9.5 uh, an odds ratio of 9.5. So people are more likely to not default on their loan at an odds ratio of 9.5. They're 9.5 times more likely not to default on their loan. And this is testing that hypothesis statistically. You could actually do a couple of other analyses to test that same hypothesis. I probably talked about that a little bit longer than I should have, but you're still going to have to look at this table later. I'll, I'll show you later when we look at the actual classification, classification table that is actually trying to predict something with the predictors. Now it's got variables not in the equation, uh, in the equation, and it's got annual salary and gender, those are the two predictors, and both of them are statistically significant uh, variables that were not included in the equation. So now we can feel like we're actually going to be predicting something here. Now we go to block one, which is there's only one block in this because it's not a hierarchical uh, logistic regression. Uh, we got omnibus tests of model coefficients. This is basically trying to test the hypothesis that there's at least some predictive capacity in the equ regression equation. Uh, and it's giving us a chi-square value and it's statistically significant. So now we feel confident there's something happening. In the next uh, table, we get something that's commonly reported in reports, uh, whether academic or commercial, in terms of um, the predictive capacity of your model. It's not the most insightful way to do so, I, I would argue, but it is a commonly reported way. And what it's got is a negative 2 log likelihood, which is very similar to a chi-square value, uh, but it's different. It's arguably more accurate in the logistic regression case. Uh, and we've got two what people call pseudo R square values. Now you might recall in multiple regression we get an R squared value which represents the percentage of variance in the dependent variable that can be accounted for by the independent variables that are uh, created uh, that are used to create a regression equation. Now this is similar, uh, but it's not based on ordinary's least squares, which is the multiple r square equivalent. This is actually based on maximum likelihood estimation, which is different, uh, and it's calculated differently. Um, so it's it's you can interpret it 
uh, the same way, but you, it's somewhat similar. Uh, what 